for our purposes, we shall adopt Professor Kreiner's definition that semantic is concerned with what knowledge individual speakers of the language who says that makes it possible for them to communicate with one another. It is important to point out at this stage of the talk that the complementary view of many things that semantics often overlaps with pragmatics. Of course, uh, this is what is known as the complementary view of the study of many that perceives that semantics is not radically different from, you know, from pragmatics. That is one view. But the separatist view thinks that semantics is different from pragmatics. Of course, the, 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 the separatist view of many often asks the question, what does X mean? But the complementary view poses the question, what did you mean by X? Of course, semantics traditionally deal with meaning as a dyadic relation, as in the question, what do you mean by X? While pragmatics do with many conceived as a triadic relation, as in the question, what did you mean by saying X? Thus, meaning in pragmatics is defined relative to, to a speaker or user of the language, whereas meaning in semantics is defined purely as a property of expressions in a given language in abstraction from particular situation speakers or hearers. At this juncture, we will focus on two crucial aspects of semantics, I mean, semantic relations in English, and these are semantic relations at the lexical level and semantic relations at the sentence level. Of course, what do we mean by semantic relations at the lexical level? To probe this question, we need to know that the aims of lexical semantics are twofold. First, to represent the meaning of, you know, of each word or lexemes in a particular language. And second, to show how the meanings of words in a language are interrelated and related to the external world of reality. Of course, our interest in lexical semantics is concerned with semantic description and analysis of what are called lexemes for the so-called semantic words. The semantic words are mainly the nouns, the verbs, the adjectives and the adverbs. Opposed to semantic words are the grammatical words, or what some scholars have called structure signals, or the so-called empty word forms. The so-called empty word forms comprise articles, conjunctions, prepositions, pronouns, interjections, and auxiliaries. Let us now focus on the following lexical semantic relations in English. These are denotation and connotation, reference, sense relations, semantic fields, and component analysis. 
starting with the relationship between denotation and connotation as aspects of semantic relations at the lexical level, you need to know that the distinction between denotation and connotation is also sometimes referred to as conceptual versus association meaning or literal versus non-literal meaning. For example, according to Ascola, denotation is used for the class of things indicated by a word. For instance, the word cat denotes the class of I mean the class of all cats. In the sentence, a cat makes a good pet. But when linguists talk about the meaning of words in a language, they are normally interested in describing the demotivated or conceptual meaning and are less concerned with the connotative or stylistic meaning of words. As I said earlier on, denotative meaning covers those basic essential components of meaning which are conveyed by the literal or the basic or the primary use of the word. For example, what do the words pig, chair, and green denote? Pig primarily denotes any animal that belongs to the swine family. Why chair denotatively refers to a piece of furniture for one person to sit on, having the back and normally four legs. Of course, the denotative meaning of green is that there is the color that is characteristic of growing grass. In contrast, connotation refers to the psychological association words are for speakers and readers. In addition to naming things, what carry shades of meaning which color our reaction to them. So, by contrast, what are the connotations of pig, chair, and green? Of course, we have alluded to the denotative meanings of those words. But what do they connote? For example, connotatively, pig could refer to a greedy or filthy person. While chair, in terms of its connotation, could refer to a seat of authority or dignity. Or, in the scholarly tradition, an important or official position as a professor or chair of a department or faculty. Again, what are the various connotations of the color green? But I mean, particularly when it is associated with a person. Of course, green could mean that that particular person is not trained, inexperienced, easily led or deceived, or that such a person is simple, naive, or jealous. What about, I mean, what about reference as a crucial aspect of semantic relations at the lexical level? Professor Palmer draws a useful distinction between denotation and reference. According to that distinction, denotation is used to indicate the class of persons, things, and so on, while reference is used to indicate the actual persons, things, and so on, being referred into a particular context. Thus, the noun cow can be used to denote the class of all cows in the world. Whether, I mean, that cow can be found in India, in Nigeria, and so on. But when we use the noun or the noun phrase, that cow, 
that formula will refer to a particular cow in a particular context. For example, in the sentence, the cat makes a good pet. The cat air is used denotatively to refer to the class of all cats. But in the sentence, a cat scratched her arm, a cat air is used to refer to a particular cat used in a particular context. In other words, referring is what speakers do, while denoting is the property of words. There are two basic approaches to the analysis and study of reference and language. These are the traditional or metallistic approach and the linguistic approach. Put briefly, the traditional or the metallistic approach assumes that the meaning of a word may be regarded as a relation between a word and the extra linguistic entity it represents that 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 is its reference. On the other hand, in the linguistic approach, linguistic reference is the systematic denotation of some linguistic expression as part of a language. For example, in the sentence, here comes Queen Elizabeth. The nominal of the noun phrase Queen Elizabeth refers, in fact, to the figure known as Queen Elizabeth of the United Kingdom. Linguistic reference, in contrast to the traditional approach, deals with reference that is a systematic function of the language itself rather than of the speaker and context. Of course, certain concepts, certain concepts are useful in thinking and talking about linguistic reference. These concepts include referring versus non-referring expressions, constant versus variable reference, reference, extensions, prototype, and stereotype. Of course, these concepts are well discussed in one of the references supplied at the end of the chapter. What about sense relations as crucial aspects of semantic relations at the lexical level? Of course, Spanish scholars will agree that sense relations are the big ones in lexical semantics. In other words, the concept of sense relation is at the very heart or so of the study of semantic relations at the lexical level. But then again, I mean, we can draw a distinction between reference and sense as follows. Reference deals with the relationship between the, you know, between the linguistic elements themselves. That is words, sentences, and generally speaking, the non-linguistic world of experience. Sense, on the other hand, relates to the complex system of relationships that hold between the linguistic elements themselves. And that means that sense is mainly concerned with what is known as intra-linguistic relations. That is the relationship between words in a particular language. Now, let us consider the major sense properties and relations that sentence, that, that 